It's time for the North Idaho PrepCast on IdahoSports.com. That's right. Welcome into the North Idaho PrepCast on IdahoSports.com. Breaking down just one and two activities week in, week out here in the great state of Idaho. My name is Brandon Bainey, and we are joined by our North Idaho expert, Ryan Skaggs. What's up, Skaggs? What's going on? <laughs> that was a big... Disappointed. Yeah. I had a year of my life sucked away waiting in line at the DMV this morning. So uh, thanks for being patient with me. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of uh, behind the scenes here. We I always text and ask our talent, uh, hey, what time works to uh, record the podcast? Uh, Ryan texted me last night, said 10. Uh, I said, okay, sounds good. Uh, it is now 1130. <laughs> local time, so. <laughs> We're just now finally getting yeah. rolling here. No, it's I, all won't, good. I won't throw the Kootenai County DMV under the bus, but yeah, I won't. We'll, yeah, keep to myself. <laughs> There's, uh, I discovered uh, my cousin was getting his vehicle registered um, over the weekend, and um, a company in Arizona has gotten into privatized, um, you know, registration and licensing of vehicles. So you mm. don't have to go to the DMV anymore. You can just go to this company. And you don't even have to be in the same county. Um, is this in Arizona or is this in Idaho? Because in Idaho, you pretty much have to go to the county DMV office. But Yeah, so it started in Arizona and he lives in Montana. So I know oh, Montana, okay. they've given the okay. green light to it. So no idea about Idaho, but um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Privatized DMV. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, uh, we got everything. We bought a, bought a vehicle recently. So we got... Got the wife out of the Prius and into a Subaru Forester. So, yeah. Oh, there you go. Cool. That's a good vehicle for sure. So, There's okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, all that terrain you got to go across, certainly. Uh, well, Coeur d'Alene went through some terrain, really just to pass, uh, to get into Montana last Friday night to take on the Rigby Trojans in a week zero football showdown. To me, that is the biggest story uh definitely am i coming through all right on your end am i you're you're freezing up just a little bit but audio wise you're fine but... okay you know what i've discovered and you've mentioned this numerous times on the prep cast in years past but now that i actually live here i'm experiencing it dude the internet up here is awful <laughs> it sucks <laughs> hey, which provider did you go with i don't know if i want to say but it's the, okay. the one that is commonly used everybody Uses. Yeah, I ended up switching actually to Verizon 5G wireless, and it's been way better than the fiber company that I had prior. So, dude, I got I got to get something have, figured out. Yeah, if you have a cable provider that's up here, yeah, good luck. <laughs> yeah, that's and that's the one we asked around, and people were like, "Yeah, unfortunately, you're probably best going with these guys." Mm -mm. Um, so no, that would be like last on my list, but that's another conversation for another time. So, yeah, we need to have an uh, offline talk here. Hard, because, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I this isn't gonna work. I mean, this is what I do for a living. I talk to people on the internet. So yeah, no, I'll talk to my neighbor. He works for him. <laughs> right. so. Yeah, I gotta I gotta get some info from you for sure. So I apologize if there are technical glitches, uh, as I'm still getting settled in here to the new uh Idaho Sports HQ, the North Idaho branch. So <laughs> uh let's let's talk about now i straight up lost you <laughs> montana in missoula uh, oh, dude this is gonna be uh, come on okay you got me now yeah i have you now <laughs> okay um let's talk about football maybe <laughs> Maybe if you lowered your video settings, yeah, how do low I do quality, that? you might be able to get away with it. Yeah. Hey, welcome back! It's the North yeah. Idaho Prepcast. Uh, Brandon Maney, Ryan Skaggs. Uh, if I had a bigger budget, production budget, I would have slapped up one of those technical difficulties. Please stand by. With the uh, little spinning wheel and the music, elevator music. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh okay until i get better internet i think we're just gonna have to everyone be patient with me please and hopefully we get this fixed soon um but for like the sixth time football Coeur d'Alene, rigby university of montana vikings get shut out last year 24 nothing 
They break through with a 28 to 21 win in week zero. Uh, this was, this was the game I was at. So I'll talk a little bit about it, but first I wanted to get your impressions. What, what were your impressions as you watched that and saw that? Um, the defense is legit. I mean, it was who it, they were, who we thought they were. I mean, defensively on that side of the ball, the Vikings were, I mean, they made Luke flowers I and mean, he's a great player in, in his own right. But like he, it was average. I mean, like really, and that's not, I don't want to like throw a kid under the bus, but the Viking defense was freaking awesome. Um, but also, I mean, offensively, they were able to get some things going, especially throwing some wrinkles in there and getting Shea Robertson on the, in, involved on the offensive side of the ball. Kid's a beast. And uh, he, he balled out in that, in that game and, and had himself a, a heck of a first half, especially, but um, yeah, no, the Vikings were able to put the pieces together. I mean, Rigby, you know, rallied a little bit, but the Vikings were able to close them out, and they looked, I mean, impressive for a week zero game. That was a huge opponent, a huge win. They got a big one in front of them this week, but um, that was a big one last weekend. Yeah, a couple of things that stood out to me as, as I was watching it unfold before my eyes. This quarter lane defense is legit, and we knew that coming mm -hmm. in. The defense was legit last year, too. The big question yeah. was, could the offense be a little bit better. And I think we saw it. Carson Spielman ran the ball at will. He rushed mm -hmm. for close to 150 yards uh, in the game. And he was a guy that I think they had high hopes for last year, but he gets hurt pretty early on in the season, ends up missing most of the year. And yep. now that he's, I mean, if he's healthy the full way, Coeur d'Alene absolutely can contend for a playoff spot in this IEL. Jamison Kazar looked uh, day and night more polished than what I saw last year. Of course, that was his first varsity start last year against Rigby, but this year he didn't force anything where last year he was forcing passes a little bit. Um, and then really they absolutely shut down Rigby's running game, which was impressive because Rigby brought back four of five starting offensive linemen. And so to me, this was something they had prepared for all off season. They used it as motivation. They really studied the tape on Rigby and you saw they were flat out the, the better prepared team as well. The more physical team too. And that was, I mean, what just absolutely jumped off the screen in that game was just how physical they were on both sides of the ball. They were maulers on the offensive front. Like you said, with Spielman going nuts out of the backfield, you know, that, that bodes well, I think later in the year, because that was something that they lacked last year was a really consistent offensive running game. And so it really got put heavily on, on Kazar's, you know, throwing ability last year. And I think he's more polished this year to where he's not forcing throws like he was last year. He's letting the game come around to him, kind of being more of a game manager, but he's made, but when he, when, you know, they're relying on him, he's, he's, he got it done. And you know, I think that's the huge step in the maturation process from last year to this year that we've seen just in one week. Um, you know, with with Rocky coming to town this weekend, I think, you know, they're going to have to have the same result. But, man, you talk about a week zero game that's going to set up the tone. I mean, the Vikings defensively, they are they're elite. You know, I would put them in the top echelon of the state um, with that unit and what they're able to do. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, if they can complete the run through the they got a pretty rigorous schedule. Um, that they, they put in front of themselves this year that, you know, there's no easy weeks in front of them, but it'll be interesting to see how things turn up towards the end of the year. There could be a, a dog pile, you know, come uh, week nine in the IEL up north. Yeah, that's going to be fascinating to watch them in Lewiston and Post Falls and, and Lake City. Who knows what they're like with a new head coach and Byron Hout uh, as well. So uh, let's, you know, so Coeur d'Alene, yes, hosting Rocky Mountain, that's going to be a very difficult matchup. Um, let's take a look at what else is happening in the 5A ranks this week in terms of football. Uh, you will have Post Falls and Lewiston and Lake City all making their season debuts. Uh, Lake City will be at Lake Lund, and we will talk about the Hawks here in just a second. So 5A, 4A matchup for the Timberwolves. Lewiston will be at the Rocky Mountain Rumble against Woods Cross High School in Utah. They will play on Saturday afternoon at 4 o'clock Mountain Time. That's 3 o'clock over here in the Pacific Time Zone. Uh, you can watch that game on IdahoSports.com. And then uh, Post Falls kicks off their season as well with a road game at Sandpoint. This will be the season opener for the Bulldogs as well, and that to me is the most intriguing game, Post Falls at Sandpoint. Yeah, that's going to be a really intriguing matchup. I mean, obviously you saw, you know, what's Sandpoint going to turn into now that they're post Parker Pettit 
Um, they still have Max Frank hanging around, but they've got some skill guys in that in that lineup that I think are going to make it in some differences um, this year. They're going to look a little different, in my opinion. But, you know, I think that with Hunter Garcia at quarterback, they're going to stay fairly athletic. Um, you could see a lot of that wing T look that they've done in the in years past. I have no honestly to be to be honest with you, I think it's kind of by design with Coach Knowles. I have no idea what they're going to do offensively. Um, they could be spread happy and and run out of the spread like they did with Parker a little bit, or they could go under center like Parker did last year um, with Hunter and, and go under center and go into that wing T kind of sniffer look. But um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what Sandpoint does defensively. Obviously, we know that they they do. They're pretty consistent on the defensive side of the ball. They like to force turnovers. Uh, post falls, you know, with uh, McCown at quarterback, I think is going to be really interesting with another year under his belt. He was a youngster last year and getting that extra year in the summer to prepare with that receiver core around him. And, I mean, there's there's guys all over the place on that post falls team. They're returning a ton of starters from last year as well. Um, you know, the running game, we know what they're going to be able to do with Tevin Burns in the backfield. The kid's just lightning quick. Um, you got, you know, Cooper Craig on the defensive side of the ball to play sideline to sideline and that secondary behind him. That's going to be a really intriguing matchup. Like you said, um, you know, kind of going X's and O's in that game, I think for a week, a week one game um, is going to be that's a dandy of a ball game. I mean, that's really one of the marquee games in the state of Idaho this weekend, I would say. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously Coeur d'Alene Rocky Mountain will also be very good um, as well. That's but for the teams. <laughs> But for the teams making their debuts, I think post fall yes. standpoint, definitely the game to watch. So let's talk a little 4A action where uh, Lakeland was in action in week zero, met Preston at Montana Tech University in Butte. Uh, this was an interesting game. Lakeland gets the 17 to 7 victory. Um, the running game was really strong for the Hawks on the ground. Uh, Cage Wheel is the new running back this year for Lakeland, and um, he did really excellent running behind what is i think an underrated offensive line lakeland's got some really good offensive linemen up front um the scoring was wheel on a nine yard touchdown run 18 yard pass from hayden benson to rowan riley and then owen forsman of course came on and did his thing and kicked the 32 yard field goal for uh for the final points he's obviously a uh, Idaho Vandals commit to be a kicker. Uh, the, 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 it was funny. The Preston radio broadcasters were doing the game and I was tuning in and they were just like mesmerized that Forsman was every kick was like a touchback into the end zone. And I'm like, you obviously haven't heard <laughs> this guy's yeah. a D one kick. Like they were just like, Oh wow. He's really got a leg. And it's like, uh, yeah, he might be the best kicker in the state. Like, Yeah, pretty easily. I mean, like there's, I don't know. <laughs> he could be the there, best there's, there's, a kid, the there's a kid. There's a kid. There's a kid at Mountain View who's pretty good this year too for, yeah. for Idaho, but they're they're the top two guys, like no question. But, yeah, I mean, you, I think Idaho's got two of the more elite kickers in the Northwest this year. I mean, if you go yeah. Washington, Oregon, Idaho, those like Forsman's right up there with any of them, um, and that's saying a lot because there's some some studs in the GSL as well over in Spokane. But um, Lakeland, you know, yeah, I mean, it, it's no shocker that that offense is going to be productive running the ball. I mean, that's just what they're going to try to hang their hat on. They're going to be a ball control offense. Um, it's kind of what we saw last year. Obviously, they lit up the scoreboard a little bit because they had, you know, a two-headed monster in the backfield last year. Um, so we'll see what, you know, with Wheel at running back, seeing what they can do to rely on him. But Benson did a great job managing the game. And, you know, his brother's out there too. Um, I believe it's his brother, if it's a brother or cousin. But, uh, you know, the other Benson out there um, at receiver with Ezra, like that kid's a legit talent as well. And we'll see what, you know, as they get him involved in the game, um, to see what, what can happen for the Hawks. That's a team that could be dangerous lurking later in the year, especially if they, you know, keep the confidence running the ball and controlling and not, not giving up turnovers. That's going to be huge for Lakeland. And uh, they do a great job coaching up that offensive line. I mean, they were great last year. They were probably one of the more underrated units in the state, uh, especially on the on the side of the offensive side running the ball. They were one of the better running offensive lines we, we saw. Um, you know, I would say, you know, them and Sandpoint were the two elite units last year. Um, and skyline but yeah i mean you look at what they're able to do and it'll be interesting to see how the challenge comes down later in the year and if they can you know eke away one of those uh, at large playoff bids and maybe maybe steal a bid you know keeping a, a hot start going then you know getting a big win over preston i think that looks good for the resume um it'll be a test with lake city it's always one of those games that you know it seems like it, you know it's all sixes as they say it could go one way or the other 
uh, between the two of those teams, and they always seem to find their way into a dogfight, and it usually comes down to the fourth quarter. Um, and with Coach Hout and an inspired group, it'll be interesting to see what Lake City can do um, coming out of the gate in a, in a new new regime. It'll be interesting to see really how he gets those guys motivated because we know there's talent on that roster. Can they put it together and get the pieces and the continuity? Um, that's going to be the interesting part for Lake City. Yeah, that's definitely the most intriguing part of this is, uh, you know, how this Lake City team looks. And Lakeland, of course, in year two under Coach Mike Schroeder, and he really came in and did a fantastic job with the Hawks uh, last year as well. The third program that competes in the Inland Empire League for a level, of course, is the Moscow Bears under head coach Rob Bafis. They uh, start their season with a road game at Kellogg. So this is a 4A playing a 2A, but Moscow has suffered from very low numbers the past couple of years and really are more representative of what a 3A program has compared to a 4A. Right? Yeah, we'll no, talk- absolutely. And they're, they're missing some pieces that they're not going to have on the, on the lineup this year just with, you know, nagging injuries and stuff. And um, knowing what they're bringing back, I mean, they're going to rely heavily on um, Scott and Lenitum that they're running back and, seeing what he's able to do. I mean, I know that that's going to be an, an interesting, you know, affair for Moscow. They're going to be super run heavy and they're going to have to rely on a lot of underclassmen in that sophomore class. that's going to be playing on um, both sides of the ball. So it'll be, uh, it'll be a test for the bears. No easy, no easy games in North Idaho for them either. I mean, they schedule Lewiston, they've got Pullman, uh, Clarkston, they're playing, you know, the two A's on the Washington side, there's, there's no easy weeks, you know, with what they're doing and scheduling down against Kellogg. I think that was kind of a return trip from Kellogg playing at Moscow last year, um, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, you know, it's, but like you said, I think Moscow is one of those teams. If we talk about in the future that could petition down like Wood River did from four A to three A Moscow is one of those programs that might be able to do that from four A to three A as well. Um, you know, just based on, competition and numbers standpoint yep definitely uh so good luck to the bears and the wildcats as they start their season you know we got a comment on last week's episode sure would be nice if you guys could talk some 3a 2a football you know we, we covered the five a's and the four a's we covered the eight man games that were happening this game totally slipped under the radar because when i looked at the schedule back in june <clears throat> this game was not it, it was a week one right. game not a not a week zero game and it got moved uh, yep. Grangeville and Timberlake played uh, on Saturday, and it was a pretty spirited contest. Uh, Timberlake ends up getting the victory 42 to 21, the final, uh, where the Tigers have a bevy of good running backs again, including one half of the Higgins and Higgins law firm that the Coeur d'Alene yep. Press dubbed last year. Vaughn Higgins is back. Um, he had 88 yards rushing. Cooper Lenz had 87. Caius Tebby who is a fantastic hurdler uh, mm-hmm. during the track and field season, uh, came out for football this year. And he's another weapon that Timberlake coach Kelly Amos is going to put to good use. He had 135 yards on the ground. Um, Jacob Yetter had 176 receiving yards and two touchdowns. Cole Meitinger threw for 229 yards and three touchdowns. No matter how you slice it up, Timberlake looks good in their yeah. season opener. No, that was what I was going to point out as a quarterback. I mean, I think that they're – going to be a little bit more dynamic this year than they've been able to be in years past in the passing game. I mean, usually typically we'll see like Timberlake go five of seven for 145 yards <laughs> because they rely so heavily on the running game. I mean, if they had to rely on that passing attack this year, I really think they can with Mightinger at quarterback. He's, he's a stud and um, he's somebody that kind of gets overlooked a little bit up North. And I think that he's going to have himself a pretty good season. Um, so, yeah, this game did slip under the radar, so we apologize to our, our Timberlake folk and our folks up in Spirit Lake that are, are so religious to watch this. But um, that Timberlake team is going to be interesting to watch, and they've got some tests ahead of them, uh, especially in the early part of the season. I mean, you're, they're going to take a trip to South Fremont, I believe, and then they have Sugar Salem still coming to town too. So um, they are going to be battle-tested coming the stretch, but it's going to come down to that last game. Um, where they they play Bonner's Ferry, that's kind of the do or die game in my opinion. But I I do see if they have, you know, if they can keep above the 500 mark throughout the season, uh, they're going to find their way in the playoff. I think they'll be on the road, but I definitely think they're going to be a dangerous team come, uh, you know, late October. But 
you yeah, gotta get through the you gotta get the, through the first eight weeks, you know, before you can get into that conversation. But uh, of course, right? That's the big caveat. You gotta get there first. Um, so yeah, when we look at the three A Intermountain League, two teams, Timberlake, Butters, Ferry, not much mystery there. You know, when they play at the end of the year, you know that's gonna determine. But both teams uh, got into the playoffs last year. I could definitely see a similar scenario this year. Um, Timberlake now hits the road. They're going to travel to South Fremont. That is a long road trip over to East Idaho. Uh, South Fremont lost to Wood River last week in a tight game where basically they took the lead with like two minutes to play and then Wood River scored with like 30 seconds to play to beat them 12 to 7, I think, was the final. But anyways, um, Bonner's Ferry opens their season with the trip to Eureka, Montana to play Lincoln County. I think we talked about in the past on the prep cast, my thoughts about Lincoln County high school in Montana and <laughs> how I'm not a huge fan of them uh, coming from Montana. Uh, I, I, I think this will be a good measuring stick for Bonner's ferry um, out of the gates. Yeah, no, I look at Bonner's ferry as one of those teams. It's what are they going to be able to follow up with what they did last year? Um, you know, with, with such a phenomenal season and a group of seniors that had graduated, but they returned some, some dudes in that lineup. Um, and there was a ton of contributors. I mean, they played more than just their seniors last year. So there's a bunch of kids with game experience, some of dudes coming back to have, um, you know, varsity ball, you know, time. So, um, you know, if they can step up and show up and they get the numbers back, I know that they had a good gr- crop of JV guys last year too. Um, that could be, you know, another year bigger, another year stronger and faster. The, the Badgers could be a dangerous team. That IML is a toss up in my opinion. I look at both Timberlake and Bonners Ferry. Um, and that's a, that's a pick em, in my opinion. I really do think both those teams are going to be, um, pretty solid. And I think that that, that last game of the year, hopefully we have it, but, um, it'd be a fun one to do, but <laughs> that's always a physical affair and usually with interesting weather. So it'll be really a telling, uh, season for Bonners Ferry. I think, you know, with what they're able to accomplish, um, yeah. early on, I think it's going to set the tone for the rest of the year. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see how these teams uh, improve and then as they meet up in the final battle at the end of the year. Uh, 2A Central Idaho League, we already mentioned Grangeville dropped their season opener. I think they're a team, you know, coaches were split in our preseason coaches poll. Uh, Half the coaches said Grangeville's going to win the league. The other half said St. Mary's. So they finished tied at the top of our preseason coaches poll. Uh, Grangeville, I think, has some good athletes back. They've got to replace some guys up front and, and on the defensive side of the ball. But um, Grangeville now is off this week. They're on bye. They will travel to Parma next Friday for what I think is a pretty winnable game against a 3A team that's really struggling. Um, the other squads will be in action. We talked about Kellogg hosting Moscow. Uh, St. Mary's with a new coach, Greg Rouse, uh, who had been an assistant coach in the past, you know, takes over for Craig Teft, who is still fighting cancer. And of course, Craig, our thoughts are with you and our prayers are with you. Uh, Cancer sucks. Um, But this is an interesting game for St. Mary's where uh, they are hosting Melba. Yeah, no, St. Mary's and Melba, I think it's going to be – and you look at the next three weeks, I mean, they, they're going to be tested walking into that that first league game against Kellogg. But you've got Melba this week, Riverside, then Freeman. Um, the following week's two Washington schools that they're going to be taking on. Um, but getting Melba at home, you know, home cooking an inspired team, they got – it's going to be interesting. I think they're going to rely heavily on that running game this year again. Um, but, you know, I think they're a little bit more physical this year. Maybe and that's going to be you know bode well for their their success. I know that they're picked kind of in that dog pile at the top of the league. It wouldn't shock me if they win the conference. It wouldn't shock me if they finish in the middle. Um, I really do like them. I think that they could be a little more consistent, one of the more consistent teams in their conference. But um, they got to come out hot. I mean, that's the thing that they're going to have to come out shooting from the hip in this first week. Um, and what they're able to do defensively, I think, is going to set the tone for the rest of the year. But defensively, I think they're going to be pretty solid. I mean, I really look at who they brought back and they should be a pretty decent team uh, on the defensive side of the ball. And I think, you know, if they can hang their hat on defense, that's going to, you know, do you favors later in the year. Yeah. And I think uh, pretty universally coaches, I asked, um, they all said conference player of the year or best player in the conference, probably Tristan Gibson from St. Mary's dynamic running back. So yeah, um, yeah, that'll be a lot of fun to watch them compete. Orofino starts their season with a road trip to Marcin. Uh, This is something we haven't talked about yet. And uh, 
we should. Orofino, of course, is a community that's still reeling from uh, the tragic loss of senior Drew Hanna, who yeah. was uh, passed away earlier this month. Really shocking news. Nobody was expecting it. He was coming into the season expecting to be the starting quarterback for Orofino. He plays basketball. He's a great pitcher on the baseball diamond. And really to be coming into your senior year and to have your life cut short is just a really sad and tragic event. And so certainly we're thinking of everybody in Orofino. It's going to be it's going to be a tough season to navigate emotionally, certainly on the field is almost secondary to how, you know, how do you respond mentally to this adversity, but it's a tough situation for Ortofino and we were certainly thinking of them. Yeah. And as a coach, I mean, I've encountered it a few times um, in the past and, you know, it's one of those things that you wonder how the, the kids are going to respond and, you know, nothing comes back to normal quick. That's the, the unfortunate part about this, especially a, a kid, you know, like him that was, you know, so beloved by his teammates in the community. And you know, I mean, just a great kid um, that nobody wants to see that happen. And, um, you know, so it's, you, you can make excuses for if things don't go their way, it would be different if we had, you know, if we were at full strength and stuff like that. Sometimes it motivates teams and they come back and they just, you know, blow the doors off of people because it's a, a rallying point for, you know, getting back to, um, you know, having that extra man on the field, even though he's not there, um, it, it can do, you know, wonders for a team that can be reeling. But there's one thing about football too, that, that helps is that, you know, it's, it, there can be some healing in it too, for a, t a community that struggles. And, um, you know, that's the great thing about sports. I think in my opinion is that, you know, things could be down and bad, but you know, there's like things that unite us and, um, sometimes sports is just something simple and people think it's just a stupid thing where people push a foot of, you know, a ball up and down the field. Um, but on a Friday night, you get the lights on and the kids get to come back out and, um, do something that feels like normal. You know, we experienced that a few years ago with, you know, the COVID stuff and everything, but I don't want to compare that to losing a teammate, but, um, yeah, I mean, my, my prayers are with the Orfino community. I mean, that's just, you know, that's such a tight knit community anyways. And, um, you know, I've got family from up the river in that area and stuff. And so it's just, I know that it's, it's affected everyone and it sucks. And, you know, my, my thoughts and prayers are with his family first and foremost, and then his friends and teammates and teachers and everybody around that, that, that school, it just sucks. And when, you know, when you mentioned it to me, it's kind of shocking. You don't really expect to hear, you know, stuff like that. You, you want to, you want all these young men and, uh, young women to, to have, you know, their future in front of them. And to have it cut short, it's just, it's tragic. It sucks. Yeah, it's its really tough. Um, but we find a way. Uh, and, and really, it's all about, uh, it's, it sounds cliche, but one day at a time. You know, that, yep. that's the only way it, it heals uh, eventually. So, uh, Orofino traveling to Marcin to kick off their season there. Let's talk eight-man football, 1A, D1. Nobody played last week. Not a single one in the White Pine League. But, boy... We've got some good games on tap this week, including one on IdahoSports.com Skags. I'm going to be yeah, broadcasting right. from Kooski on Friday night as Clearwater <laughs> Valley welcomes in the Notice Pirates. Notice is the favorite from District 3. Clearwater Valley is going to be right near the top of the White Pine. This is going to be a great non-conference battle. Yeah, a great early season match. I mean, that's something you'd expect to see maybe in the semis. Um, you know, a game that wouldn't wouldn't shock me one bit to, to see a rematch in the playoffs this year. Um, between those two teams. I mean, Clearwater Valley is bringing back, you know, and they're reloading too. And, um, you know, that team, I know that they're they're really high on their hopes this year. And that that White Pine is going to be a absolute dogfight. I mean, it's kind of anybody's um, conference, in my opinion, this year, if you look at the top four amongst that league. But, um, you know, it'll be interesting when things reshuffle and you get, you know, the likes of Kendrick coming up to, to 1AD1. But, um yeah, it'll be, you know, kind of the last year before the calm before the storm of next year. But you look with, you know, Clover Valley, Prairie. I mean, there's there's teams that can that can, you know, turn some heads this year. And I think that Clover Valley, in my opinion, might be in the favorite, but you got you know, Cami eyes right there too, again, with reloading from a championship game run from last year too. And um yeah, that that league's just deep. There's depth in that conference and um it's gonna be a dogfight every week. Yeah, based upon basically kind of what, you know, talking to coaches in the preseason, the hierarchy is Kamei 1, 
because they're the defending champs and yep. they've earned it and they bring back some pretty good pieces. Um, then you've got this next tier and it's kind of four teams. Everybody kind of agrees on it's Clearwater Valley in some order, Clearwater Valley, Prairie, Logos and Potlatch. Potlatch. Yeah. Logos and then, can flat spin it too. That's the thing. I mean, yes. they can throw the ball all over the park. So that's going to be, you know, defensive got to defensive have to be ready uh, for, for what Logos brings to the table this year. Definitely. Um, and Logos opens their season with a game against Lakeside at Lakeside on Saturday night. It looks like Logos is going to kick things off. One of the few games happening in the White Pine this week. Um, so you've got kind of a top five and then there's a little bit of a drop off. And then you've got Troy, Lapway and Genesee, who are kind of the dark horse teams, maybe yep. on the lower side for numbers. Um, but we'll see how they can uh, progress throughout the season. So yeah, Logos at Lakeside, Clearwater Valley is hosting notice. And I think that is it. Oh, and Troy, and Troy is hosting Deary yeah. and, the, and, and that's it. Otherwise white pine is just going to take the week off. And then we'd start with league play every week from now till the end of the year. And so, um, it's going to be fun as always to watch these teams from the white pine, uh, duke it out and battle. At the 1AD2 level, let's start in the North Star League where we had two conference games already, Skaggs, out of the gates. How about it? Uh, Mullen St. Regis beats Clark Fork 20 to 6. Um, uh, Mullen St. Regis just got done with a four year starter at quarterback in, in, uh, in Caleb uh, Ball. Uh, he is now graduated, of course, or excuse me, uh, yeah, Ball. And then uh, they've got a freshman QB in now, Connor Lewis. So they're just, hey, we had a four year starter. Let's just have another four year <laughs> starter at QB. He did pretty well. He's he in the car, and here you go. <laughs> yeah, he, he yeah. threw two touchdown passes uh, to running back John Pruitt, one of the few returning starters from last year. Uh, 52 and 53 yard touchdown passes to Pruitt. Um, on the other side, Clark Fork feels like, man, we, we were right in it twice clark fork had the ball inside the 10 yard line came away empty both times so yeah. they cash in on those you're talking about a different game and clark fork of course has uh the santa romans back and ethan howard and and i think i'm looking forward to the rematch between these two yeah no i mean there's gonna be another chance later down the road it'll be interesting if clark fork can clean up some of the mistakes that they had early in the year and um, I still look at that being, you know, those are the top two teams within the conference, obviously that Walsh is going to be right in there too. But um, yeah, I mean, that, the, the North star league is going to be uh, an interesting shakeup. I think that, you know, if we see a changing of the guard this year, I don't know if that's going to necessarily take place with Bull and St. Regis. They're just, I, I want to say they're going to have the stranglehold on that with just the kids that they've got left in that um, group. They, they're bringing some more up and, um, you know, the freshmen, if they can play and mature and control the ball, I think that, you know, they're going to, it's going to bode well for them later in the year. But, um, I mean, obviously we know what's going to happen with the white pine league down south, but, uh, in district two, but, uh, for district one football, there's going to be, um, it's going to be week in week out. I think it's going to be pretty close. Wallace could be one of those contender teams that's hanging around that not a lot of people are talking about. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Yeah, it'll be really intriguing. Uh, the other game you mentioned, Wallace played uh, Kootenai. Wallace wins 54-14. to 14. Wallace has 10 freshmen this year uh, that are a part of the varsity squad. And it was the young bucks, you know, that did a lot of the heavy lifting. Uh, freshman Jackson Pierce scored two rushing touchdowns. Uh, freshman Reese Williams scored a rushing touchdown. Starting quarterback was a freshman, Henry Larson. Um, he threw two touchdown passes to, to Julian Davis, who's not a freshman. He's a junior. And then Davis scored on a reverse. I'm telling you what, I watched the film of this game, Julian Davis. He's like six, two big tight end runs like a gazelle. He's going to, he's going to present some problems in, in the yeah. North star league this year. He's a fun player to watch for Wallace. Yeah. And then you I mean, you look at what he does on the defensive side of the ball too. He's everywhere. Just like he's on offense. So, um, that's just going to be. It's going to be a fun conference to watch. I think that the the top three teams being so balanced and I think within arm's reach of each other makes for a competitive competitive season, uh, especially with the way the scheduling goes with home and homes between the teams. So it'll be, um, yeah, fun a fun year up north. I think for you know small school football. Yeah. So we mentioned Lakeside making their season debut in in the North Star League as well. They're hosting Logos. Uh, Mullen St. Regis is going to play a Montana school this week. Uh, they're going to play Superior, the Bobcats, who have been oh. 
an eight man power in years past. They're going to play that game in St. Regis. They always try to get a couple uh, home games in St. Regis as part of the co op. Huckleberry um, shakes for everyone, right? <laughs> that's dude, that place is so. I was driving back on Sunday from, from Montana because I went to do the game Friday night, right, at University of Montana. And then I stayed for the weekend with my family and I'm driving back Sunday. And you know, you're on the road and mother nature calls you gotta go yeah. right uh so i'm like i'm by saint regis i'm like oh i'll just pull off at the you know the little uh, plaza shop thing that they've got yeah. there and it was so packed the traffic was backed up onto the street just to turn into the parking lot i was like nope and i just got right back on the interstate <laughs> you're like, here's that rest area and the 15 more miles i'll go ahead and stop there yeah, not it wasn't <laughs> happening, but you're, that place is always so busy. Uh, yep. They've got the world famous Huckleberry Shakes there, of course. So yeah, um, so yeah, that's where Mullen St. Regis is. Wallace has the week off, and then Clark Fork is going to play Kootenai. So Clark Fork is going to host Kootenai in their second league game of the season already. So. Uh, we will see how that all shakes out there. And then, of course, in the White Pine League, we talked about it. Deary's going to play Troy in its season opener. You've got Timberline from Weipe uh, playing at Lapway in their season opener. Uh, we have Lewis County making their season debut. Uh, they will be playing uh, Salmon River on Saturday afternoon at 1 o'clock. Um, and those three are going to be fighting for second place. Uh, Lew Lewis County head coach, Monty Madrell, you know, he knows the deal. He said, look, hey, let's just cut to the chase. The battle is for second place. It should be a good one. Um, and it will be interesting to see these three teams all duke it out. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to say the foregone conclusion, but you know, everybody's like statewide is like, oh man, when just wait till Kendrick gets rid of, you know, Ty Kep graduates. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you still got two more years of Nathan <laughs> Dwight. So um yeah, that's uh that's gonna be he's gonna be a problem. And he's gonna he's on the offensive side of the ball for the Tigers. And um, but you talk about that that second place battle. Um, you know, I thought Lewis County last year was was a pretty solid program. Um obviously they had one of their you know best players go down with an injury late in the season, which was pretty unfortunate for them. But um you know, I, I I like them coming back. They got a lot of pieces back from that group last year too. Um, Timberline's going to make things interesting as well. They usually do. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's you know, it's anybody's game. I think for that second spot. But Kendrick, you talk about at the top of the heap. I mean, you look at their schedule too. I mean, it is just unbelievable uh, <laughs> what they've scheduled for a one A D two team. And uh, I know that they've been you know, fight and tooth and nail to try to keep games on the schedule with teams back and out at the last minute and stuff like that. But, um, you know, what Coach Hobart's done with that group is nothing short of impressive and um, really noteworthy. I think regardless of classification that you're a, you know, top echelon team and you're in the conversation for multiple state championships. And I don't think that that, that conversation is going to stop anytime soon. Um, so it'll be, it'll be great to see, you know, what happens and how that run went with the defense last year and the shutout streak. I mean, they've got another group that can do just the same thing again this year um, down in Kendrick. So, you know, does the streak of perfection continue? They're, they're running an impressive uh, undefeated streak, you know, into the season. So it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how they come away with, you know, playing some one AD one teams and stuff like that and how that shakes out. Yeah, uh, and of course, Kendrick opens their season at home against Council, uh, kind of the best team from District 3. We will have that game for you Friday night on IdahoSports.com. So two eight-man uh, games for you as part of North Idaho Game Night this week. Notice at Clearwater Valley, Council at Kendrick, defend the North. We've got those <laughs> Boise area schools coming. <laughs> well, Kendrick gets to open up that new stadium too. So, I mean, yeah. they've got the new, you know, press box and concession area and, and lockers and all that stuff. I mean, that's a really nice facility they're super proud of down there in Kendrick and they've done great things and deservedly so. And it's, it's having an effect in the entire school and with all the other programs too. I mean, you talk about them winning a state basketball championship. They've been hyper competitive on the girls side. Um, so that's just, you know, rising tides lift all boats. And that's, I think we are kind of seeing that happen down there. Yep. Uh, let's talk soccer real quick before we get out of here. Uh, we have had a couple of matches get postponed because of poor smoke. That seems to be clearing up. Finally, uh, yesterday, August 22nd, 
We had Lake City taking on Lewiston and boys soccer. 12 nothing the final in favor of the Timberwolves. Okay. Yeah. That's uh yeah, I don't know what more you need to really say about that game. The score kind of speaks for itself. And I know that there was a, a really close game on the girls' side uh between Lake City and Lewiston yesterday as well. So um and then Coeur d'Alene was in action against Lakeland this, yesterday as well, opening up that new uh stadium. They got the new field turf down at Coeur d'Alene High School. And the first event that happened was a girls' soccer game and uh Lake City came away with a big win on that. Or sorry, not Lake City. Coeur d'Alene came away with a big win over Lakeland uh, yesterday yep. in girls soccer. Yeah, five to one. Um, they... In the second half. The... Uh, as, uh... <laughs> I was on the edge of my seat waiting for you to come back because you had another audio glitch. <laughs> yeah, this is... Uh, so we've also got um, happening... Uh, McGall Donnelly has come up from District 3. Uh, they're boys and girls soccer teams to play Coeur d'Alene Charter. They played last night, um, and then they're playing Timberlake today, Wednesday the 23rd. Uh, Coeur d'Alene Charter girls picked up a 3-0 win over McCall Donnelly yesterday. Uh, the boys drew to a draw, 0-0 tie between McCall Donnelly and Coeur d'Alene Charter. These are both programs that expect to be at state, so it's kind of cool yeah. that the Vandals came up here to play uh, a little North Idaho road trip early in the season. Yeah, no, that's a, a good trip for them and, and a good contest for up North competition wise, getting to see, you know, some fellow three, a action, um, especially teams that you, you could possibly see in the postseason, and to kind of get that early season test and know where you're at. Um, and then obviously I think on the boys side, if I'm not mistaken, Lake city and Sandpoint played already too. So um, there's been, yeah. you know, a lot of good soccer going on around the area that we've missed. It's kind of flown under the radar, but yeah, that uh, Lake City Sandpoint match got postponed. Was the uh, girls that played then? Because I know one of them yeah. took place, I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just some individual highlights uh, in that Lake City 12 0 win over Lewiston. Two different players get hat tricks. Uh, Michael Chan <laughs> and Jay Z Steimick Ekman both get uh, hat tricks. You had Timberlake. They beat St. Mary's 14 to nothing on Saturday. They had three different players with hat tricks um, there. <laughs> So, and then Grangeville beat, <laughs> yeah, Gr Grangeville beat St. Mary's last night, 13 to nothing. And Taden Stokes Nuxall had a hat trick for Grangeville as well. So St. Mary's, I know they've struggled with numbers for soccer the past couple of years, and they've been on some lopsided scores here early on, but um, we'll see how they progress as the season moves along as well. But yeah, soccer off and running to be sure. Yep. So we're in, we're in full stride. I mean, Obviously, school hasn't started yet and won't start until after Labor Day. But until then, I mean, we're we're off to the races with everything going on for fall sports. There's no shortage of activities going on. Definitely. All right. Well, before my internet completely uh, blows a gasket here, we will exit stage left. Thank you for tuning into the North Idaho PrepCast, everybody. Enjoy the competition this week. For Ryan Skaggs, I'm Brandon Bainey, and we will see you next time on IdahoSports.com.